This is the Emergency Medical Minute. All right, all y'all, this is an extension of mine from the other day. So I had like the thallium toxicity one, if you were here that a particular morning. So during the thallium toxicity, we were talking about um, other uses for thallium. And has anyone heard of that phrase, a night with Venus, a life with Mercury? No? You never heard that phrase? Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's like this saying like, oh, yes, it sounds intriguing. Oh, uh, yeah. So uh, thallium, as it turns out, was one of the treatments for syphilis. So then I was just sort of recalling crazy things that people did to treat syphilis before penicillin. <laughs> and there's, a, there's like a whole bunch of crazy stuff. So we definitely need to talk about this. This will be fun. All right. So first of all, um, syphilis, it, you know, obviously a really bad disease and there's no treatment before penicillin. And what's crazy is, so World War I, the number two reason for soldier disability was STDs. And of that, like syphilis was at kind of the top of the list. They couldn't really discern in some cases but between syphilis and gonorrhea. But anyway, so syphilis was a, was a big deal. So the reason I'm doing it is I talked about thallium. They used to use thallium for treatment. And I think they did like all sorts of crazy heavy metals uh, back in the day. So one of the favorite treatments was um, mercury. So that's a night with Venus, a life with mercury. And mercury, you couldn't just, well, mercury is toxic, just like thallium. You couldn't just um, do it, you know, one time dose. You had to keep on giving mercury. And probably more people died of mercury toxicity than from the actual syphilis. And so they started doing things. And I wrote some vocabulary terms on the words, or on the board rather. Uh, so fumigation, that doesn't sound like a technique that I would use now, but they'd basically heat up mercury in the fumes. You can just go into a small room and have the fumes of mercury surrounding you to treat your syphilis. That doesn't sound very safe. Then they got a little bit safer and they kept on making like an ointment type of thing that you could rub on all of your uh, syphilitic lesions. Um, and the problem is, again, it wasn't one treatment. It had to keep on going on and on and on. Uh, so uh, you got toxicity from that. You also got um, guayacum. So guayac, you know, like those guayac cars we use, is from the guayacum tree. So they'd take the guayacum tree, boil it down, and get a little flask full of this guayacum liqueur. And you'd actually have to do that. And this was my favorite instruction. So we give medicines like, okay, take Tylenol, Q6, PRN, fever. So you take guayacum um, until the moon completes its orbit. And you must stay in an enclosed room um, so no breeze comes by and blows away the effects or you don't get, like, chill blain. So you had to do it, like, for a full lunar cycle, apparently. Uh, other treatments were from the barber, bloodletting, uh, vitriol, arsenic. Arsenic, again, keeping with the theme of toxic heavy metals. Um, what was the other one that was good? Oh, uh, salversan, which is like a benzol arsenic uh, compound. And they called it compound 606. So that sounds toxic in and of itself. Uh, bismuth. And oh, I like this one too. Uh, they'd give, they'd induce malaria. by They'd find someone who has malaria, um, draw their blood, and then give it to a person to give them malaria. And then the high fever they thought would help treat uh, the syphilis. Then they could treat malaria with quinine. Because they thought, oh, it's easier to treat malaria than syphilis. So thankfully in the 1940s, penicillin came along. We didn't have to do thallium, arsenic, mercury, uh, burning things, giving people malaria, bismuth salts, or anything else. So we've made some progress in the years. Emergency Medical Minute is and always will be about free medical education. Medicine's most prolific podcast is successful because of our supporters, donors, and of course, our listeners. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you support spreading free medical education, Please donate at our website, emergencymedicalminute.com. As always, keep listening.